Welcome everyone, it's the Crypto Lark, and today I'm very honored to have on none other than Justin Sun, the visionary behind Tron. Justin, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Crypto Lark, and uh, uh, it's my honor uh, to be uh, here today, and I will elaborate the detail of Tron's vision and the future plan. Awesome. Well, I want to start off with for anybody who doesn't know about Tron yet, I know you're a very popular project that a lot of people are talking about, but can you give us the short version? What is Tron and what are you doing? Uh, Tron provides the infrastructure for the decentralized internet. Uh, this is uh, our mission. So ba basically, um, the short version of our um, vision um, is like providing the infrastructure for the decentralized internet or for the future internet. Awesome. And when we look at the internet infrastructure today, we understand that there are so many problems with the way the internet is working. So I love projects like this that can offer something new for the internet of the future. Well, let's jump in and actually dig into some of the details and really answer some of the questions that the community has been having. So your final, the final part of the main net launch is scheduled for the 30th of August. Are you confident that that's going to go off as you plan it to? Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, we um, this week we'll be uh, ready for the for the launch already. But we will uh, doing lots of the tests, uh, like the pressure test, volume test, to make sure um, it is work very well when we launch the um, net. Um, because uh, actually, our main net has been uh, is already launched in the. June 25th, but right now we are building the virtual machine on the uh, mainnet. The virtual machine is more like the tools for the developers. They can ship their product and that they can develop like very interesting uh, decentralized application, the apps on the, the network. And also um, it's not only the virtual machine right now, because the virtual machine is just like the, um, it, it's like the house, but we also need to build up lots of the in infrastructure in the mm -hmm. house. For, for example, like the gas, electricity, uh, this stuff to make sure when the people move into the house, they can have a very convenient experience, very comfort. So um, for example, right now our engineer and our developer in the Tron community is also built up the infrastructure. For example, it's like Tron Web. It's more like the Ethereum, Ethereum version of the Tron Web 3 dot js also like truffle like tron truffle uh tron studio is more like the remix and the truffle in the ethereum network um infura uh, we got like a tron infura so basically um all the infrastructure will be ready at the end of the august and uh, I, I i hope we will, we will have like a very exciting tron uh d app environment after that uh, because you know, because we uh, our speed is like eighty times compared to Ethereum, so all the um, problem right now have in the Ethereum network will not be the same in the Tron network. So um, I expect we will have a very amazing developer experience once we launch after the August the thirtieth. Fantastic. And that was going to be a part of my next question, actually, is, you know, how fast is Tron? And well, 80 times faster than Ethereum is great. Obviously, we see that Ethereum has had problems in its yeah. scaling. But we have seen yeah. some other solutions that are also very fast, but they always sacrifice some of their decentralization. And so yeah. in terms of how decentralized Tron is going to be, can you talk about that a little bit and how much of the decentralization is sacrificed? to get yeah. very high scalability. Yeah. Um, so basically, I think our uh, solution is very reliable. Uh, we use the depose mechanism. So we have like 27 um, super representatives with 100 um, super representative candidates. So um, basically, um, we um, when it comes to the decentralization, I think we have uh, several categories. Um, first one is the uh, how decentralized uh, in the POW version is like the mining power 
and the, in the POS is the how decentralized is the super representative. Uh, right now, I think it, um, it's pretty good for the um, deep post mechanism compared to the POW mechanism. Um, for example, right now, the majority of the POW uh, uh, mining pool, uh, for example, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and um, and uh, BCH, and uh, Litecoin, uh, Dash, Monero, is all dominated by Bitman. So we know, like, the, the for example, Bitman, right now, the mining pool they control, they occupy, like, 50% of the mining power. Um, so, so basically, I think it will be uh, much uh, improved in the Tron network. Uh, we right now we only have like uh, we have like seventy, uh, twenty-seven um, uh, super representative. So uh, actually, the 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 hash power was divided into the uh, uh, twenty-seven pieces. So uh, one super representative only occupy like one. Um, 27 of the whole mining power. So it's much uh, decentralized compared to the mining pool we have right now. Um, so this is the first category. Um, the si second category, I think, is the voting power. Um, the depots we have like a, a very, I, I think, it is advanced uh, um, governance um, mechanism, is the uh, voting system. So basically, every um, TRX holder has a right to vote um, in order to uh, represent, uh, to rep uh, express their voice, um, to select the people to represent them. Uh, I think it's also uh, very, um, uh, it's better compared to the Ethereum and Bitcoin we have right now. For example, I have been like a Ethereum and the Bitcoin holder for a long time. But you know, like every governance con uh, conflicts and uh, all the like, uh, like the battle inside of the Bitcoin and the Ethereum mm -hmm. is, is not like anything to do with the token holders, right? So mm -hmm. I, I know there's lots of the conflicts, for example, in Bitcoin with the Bitcoin core and the Bitman and the community, but no people can vote to uh, express their voice. Uh, even though Bitcoin has a very, um, I, I think, robust community, but they, the community members cannot express their, their voice. So um, I, I, I remember like an article uh, was in the Bitcoin community. Somebody raised this um, problem. They said, like, um, it's very hard to tell if you own Bitcoin or not. So once if you own the Bitcoin, we can verify your voice is like actually legit, right? Because if you didn't have like any Bitcoin at all, actually your propose and your advice is not very important because you don't own the stake actually. Mm -hmm. so, so basically that's also, I think is a very um, uh, advanced mechanism uh, on the governance. So basically our voters can um, vote for the super representative so um, if the super representative don't act very well, if they miss blocks, if they didn't behave well, um, they will lose their votes. Actually, it's uh, happened in Tron Network. Some of the uh, super representative, they miss lots of the block when they elected as a, a representative uh, and their voters uh, um, um, dismiss uh, from the, 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 the pool uh, immediately. So. The, the super representative, they um, um, uh, they can't be elected. So I think that's also the second category, which I think very decentralized. So everybody have a voice, have a choice. Um, the third one I think is very, um, compared to lots of the centralized uh, mechanism. I think for, for example, the centralized mechanism is more like Ripple, Stella, uh, Cradle. They use some kind of the centralized way to, um, to, to, to do the verification. I think the problem is um, if you cannot get the approval of the, like the, 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 the central nodes, you can't participate in the, uh, um, in the um, verification process. Mm -hmm. That's also different from Trump. So everybody can be like a, a super representative um, candidate. So if you like burn 100K, TRX, you can be be the super representative. We we don't have like any um, like like proof um, process of the candidate. 
So these um, guarantees, everybody have the same right to be elected. So uh, right now, we almost have like 200 candidates right now. Wow. So like, yeah, and, and it's grow like uh, uh, fast. So I think in the future, our even the candidate can be like 500 or something. So um, I think from this category, it's also very um, cent- decentralized. And, and and the fourth part, I, I think, is compared to um, uh, lo- lots of the people, it, it's very about um, the network can be like uh, taken by like some like superpowers. Uh, I think it's also uh, we we have this uh, mechanism is because if like the the, the somebody uh, he's control lots of the votes. Um, I think the the voters can uh, immediately. Um, uh, withdraw their votes. So, so it, it's also a very, um, I, I think it's a very uh, good mechanism to prevent somebody control like, like the whole network. Very cool. Definitely, we can see that the lack of governance with, for example, Bitcoin has been very destructive for the Bitcoin community. So I really like this idea that, you know, people can actually vote on the delegates that are going to run the system for them. Now, yeah. here we are, almost a year later after Tron has been sort of incubated as an idea. What has been your biggest criticism of Tron so far? I think most of the people, um, first of um, first time when they heard of Tron, because we have like a so ambitious plan, they, they kind of like intended to um, have this mistrust. So they, they don't trust us on the project. So uh, some people may call it scam because they, they don't believe it's achievable. Mm. I, I think that's the only problem. For example, when, when we first started our project in the 2017, because we have a, a eight to 10 years plan for the, for the future, some people think this eight to 10 years is like bullshit because it's, nobody can commit into like <laughs> some project in like eight to 10 years. That, that's the, uh, they don't believe our uh, plan because the time is too long. But from our perspective, uh, we have this eight to 10 years um, plan because at the beginning, we want to achieve something is not just like a, a simple project um, um, for like most of the crypto uh, world we have right now. It's mm-hmm. a very simple project. Um, but we want to achieve the, like the greatness. We want to uh, achieve something like never been achieved before. Um, so that's why we have this eight to 10 years plan because I also have a very uh, clear and the solid vision for the future. Um, um, sometimes I also share in my team, it's like, because I think right now the, the, the whole internet is like more like a centralized internet, but be, before the centralized internet was created, when it designed by like Tim Berners Lee and lots of the uh, front runner, uh, they believe the internet should be like decentralized. So mm-hmm. everybody can um, visit, like everybody can share the content and you can like um, to censor those contents and you, um, and the data should be like uh, storage in uh, like a very decentralized way. And the, um, like the transaction can be like a very in a very decentralized ledger. It's not like today, so um, you can easier to be blocked by banks if they um, the banks they got lots yeah. of the regulatory yeah uh, issues. So basically, um, so that's why um, uh, our vision is to build the infrastructure for the future internet. Uh, because first of all, I think lots of the people they need a decentralized internet. Uh, for for example, uh, right now, lots of the people in the Venezuela. In the Turkey, mm. uh, the country's economy is collapsed. They need uh, a alternative for there to storage their values. They need like a new infrastructure for the internet. Uh, for example, for lots of the countries, uh, when they don't have lots of the internet infrastructure to support their uh, entertainment, support their living. So they need free and decentralized internet in uh, infrastructure for them. So that's why in the first place we built this project. Uh, and uh, I believe it will get bigger and bigger in the future because I think that people uh, need decentralized internet. Absolutely, I completely agree. It is the future of the internet. But my question would be that 
we see the version of Tim Berners-Lee and how he wanted to see this decentralized internet happen. Now, the unfortunate part is that during the 90s and the early 2000s, big companies took yeah. control of the internet. So how do you, as a decentralized project who wants to decentralize the web as we know it, overtake those yeah. centralized platforms? I think the 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 Tim Berners Lee is more like a, a, a visionary, a vision, a visionary. Uh, so, but Tron, we are like uh, both visionary and the doer. So we will like actually practice this vision uh, and make it to be reality. That's also one of our mission. So basically, we have right now we have like a very strong team. Uh, we grow from zero people to right now three hundred people in a very short time, just in a year. And I think um, before that, um, the people see the benefits of the centralized internet. Because the centralized internet, you can have a very uh, high speed and you can have, a re first of all, you can have a reliable uh, solution and the experience. Um, but at that time, um, the negative effects of the centralized internet is not like very, uh, um, it, it's not like very popular. But right now, everybody sees the, um, the the problem of centralized internet. For example, the Facebook, they got like control mm. of people, people's data and they can easier to manipulate the data to uh, even to affect the, the uh, US um, general election. And uh, um, Google also got lots of the data and they uh, got like scandal like every day. Um, for example, recently, they, um, they just been find out they use the data to uh, do lots of the commercial advertising uh, and it's not uh, like approved by the users. And also, uh, for example, right now the centralized institution, the payment system has lots of the centralized governance problem and the people won't trust the centralized node anymore. So that's why I think it is the, um, it's, this is the time for us to have like a decentralized internet. So I think time timing is also very critical. So uh, when when the 1980s, uh, um, 90s, and the two, uh, early 2000, uh, the timing is not very good. But I actually I think right now we have like a solid timing. Mm -hmm. And also uh, um, I think also the second uh, advantage we have we have like a very strong community. So um, so Facebook. Google, they have um, back 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 up by the Wall Street, uh, but we are back up by the people. <laughs> we have like more uh, power than the Wall Street because uh, like everybody um, in the community is believe in the um, in the project. It's not like the the Wall Street they 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 more like believe in the profit, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's also why why I think it's a very revolutionary um, structure changed from the people government, uh, from the capital government to people government. So actually, um, because right now, actually, uh, I can give you some example. Uh, for, for example, for the governance of the Facebook, you can see the, the users of the Facebook, they don't have like any power at all, right? That's it, nothing. So, Facebook controls yeah. everything. Yeah, it's very pa passive, actually. So if the Facebook um, um, uh, delete your account or block your account, you have like nothing to do, right? So it's just like the the, the um, some like um, um, monarchy countries, like the the king got like every right. They can easier to execute some some guy, and he had like no rights at all. So it have happened in the virtual world, right? So because uh, I. I don't use like Facebook March, but I use like the the Chinese version of the Facebook when I was in the college. Uh, it's it's called the Ren Ren uh, Ren Ren um, website. Uh, it's a uh, it's a Chinese Facebook, and I said something like very offensive to the Ren Ren management team. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they deleted my account. <laughs> so just like uh, you got you got banned from the Chinese Facebook, Justin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just like you you say some bad words about the king in the monarchy country, and you get beheaded like immediately <laughs> after. That. I see. I see what happened. You got banned from the from yeah. the Chinese Facebook, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna build yeah. my own, guys. <laughs> You'll yeah, see. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, 
in terms of so that's the centralized project now there's a lot of other decentralized projects which are working on this idea of a new internet we have projects like elastos for example and of course we have you know eos which is building uh, their own version of what they want to see the future of you know the internet and computing look like so how do you compare with those projects and do you see them as competition or do you see ways that you can all work together to bring this future yeah uh, first of all, I, I think because the, the um, decentralized internet is in a very early stage, so um, I think everybody, uh, we are like like the, the, the power, you know. <laughs> so it's like, bro, so um, we make the uh, industry getting better. So I don't like expected anyone to be the, um, the competitor. Uh, even the Ethereum, I think if they got like a huge progress on their uh, sharding, on their um, new POS uh, uh, mechanism, I think it will be a big plus for the whole industry. Um, but, also, but also I think the different project, we take like different approach to the, um, when we trying to uh, uh, achieve our goal. Uh, for example, I think the, uh, the Tron uh, for our region, uh, we take the approach to the people. So we build up like a very strong uh, community so everybody can have a great voice in the community. Uh, this is different from lots of the uh, um, project. For example, like Bitcoin, Ethereum was more like a developer mm -hmm. uh, approach. Um, but they, um, they, um, they first they do the developer and then they do the community. But the Tron would do lots of the community. And also, um, uh, our company culture or the foundation culture or the community culture is we do things very fast. So, for example, Ethereum takes like almost two years to uh, to complete the whole project. We just um, use six to nine months to finish the whole project and move very fast. So I think different projects have different approach. Uh, for the Elexto, I think they what well, their approach is more like hardware. Um, because I know them in, in, in China. Um, their team previously, they do lots of hardware um, of the um, work, hardware work. Um, but uh, for me, uh, we uh, focus on software because um, because before I uh, invented Tron, I was like built Ripple and also um, the, the uh, Call Me application is all like software. Mm -hmm. So I think use like different approach. Um, so for also for uh, for EOS, I think EOS has a very complicated uh, operating system. Uh, for example, they they got like a RAM, uh, CPU, lots of different mechanism. I think this maybe make it like much more complicated for the developer to understand and to uh, develop their application on the EOS. So um, we also trying to. Uh, for Tron, we're also trying to make it like simpler uh, and more convenient for the developer and reduce the price they're trying to um, to build their application on platform. So for example, you can compare to, for example, right now you need to take at least 20 bucks US dollar to get a EOS account and run application. Right now, for if you want to get a um, TRX account, it's almost like free. <laughs> There you go. That's a big difference in terms yeah, yeah. of onboarding users around the yeah. world, people who might not yeah. have 20 bucks. That's yeah, a big yeah. difference yeah. indeed. Yeah. Exactly. Now, we're, since we're talking a bit about comparisons, obviously we have the Ethereum virtual machine. Now we have the Tron virtual machine. So how do those two virtual machines compare? Yeah. Um, I think first of um, first of the advantage, um, in all, I think we, we are better than Ethereum. Um, because several um, reasons. Uh, first of all, um, is the speed. Uh, our virtual machine speed is um, at least I think right now. Um, um, because we just built it right now, I think it's ten times faster than the Ethereum virtual machine. So basically, uh, lots of the games um, we we talk to lots of the Ethereum developers, and they are very exciting because lots of their project they can't run on Ethereum. For example, some people doing like a PVP, you know, like person, um, people versus people, like this is like a fighting game. So on the Ethereum, when they trying to beat those person, use some kind of the um, uh, tactics. 
uh, and uh, the the Ethereum takes like a day to to to, <laughs> to actually upload those. Unless you want to pay a, you know, a substantial fee to get it through. And that's actually a real interesting situation. We do have a lot of people building on top of Ethereum, but yeah, until right. Ethereum scales, and Ethereum will scale, but until that happens, yeah, their dApps may not actually be, be best hosted on Ethereum, which is a funny situation. Yeah, exactly. So right now, um, they, they are trying to move to the um, our platform. So we got like instant feedback. So actually... Those PVP game, PVE game will be very uh, convenient uh, in the Tron platform, and also lots of the people doing lots of the uh, Tron dogs, Tron puppy game to to raise pets on the uh, Tron. Mm -hmm. They also got feedback from their pets. So basically, I think after the uh, scalability problem is solved, uh, we will expect we will have lots of the new um, games on Tron platform. So it's, it, it is, this is also very exciting uh, because we build up all this infrastructure and we can see uh, every day there will be like surprise come from the developer because they, they try some new things and they see some like new games develop on Tron. So uh, something uh, I didn't even know today, but we will see after the August 30s, I think will be lots of the game different from the Ethereum right now uh, will be developed. It. And now, while we're talking about other blockchains as well, interoperability is a really big buzzword in 2018. Yeah. So is interoperability with other blockchains a focus for Tron? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we uh, we have this plan in Q, Q, Q4. Uh, and communicate with different blockchain, uh, I think it's very popular. It's definitely one of the things we do in the future because we... Uh, we expect it to have lots of the excellent public chain in the future. Uh, that's also um, uh, when we do, do this job, we also focus on by like the, the blockchain.org. Uh, it's like blockchain.org is, uh, is one of the top domain name uh, in the whole industry. Uh, actually, it's the one because we, we got like Bitcoin.org, Ethereum.org. Right now we got like blockchain.org. Uh, it's also trying to put all the public chain information, data, uh, transaction, uh, database together mm -hmm. and to analyze it to provide like a, a very solid uh, database so for all the developers and the community members. Yeah. Very, very cool. Now, I want to move the conversation over to you recently bought BitTorrent, which is a massive acquisition. Now, what does yeah. this actually mean for Tron? Why did you buy it, and what is it going to do for you? Yeah. First of all, uh, for for uh, Tron and BitTorrent, we share the same vision. Um, BitTor um, BitTorrent started the, the decentralized revolution in like early 2000s, and they actually um, achieved some uh, great milestones. They got like a Hundred over hundred million users around the world in the hundred and thirty eight countries. They got uh, more than one million users, and this is a very uh, I think is an amazing uh, accomplishment. And right now they got lots of the uh, huge believer of the decentralization in their community. Mm -hmm. So that's the um, I think the, we share the same value is the reason we acquired BitTorrent, and we also have. Uh, one of the very exciting projects called Atlas. Uh, we trying to um, build um, a new project, put the Tron um, protocol and the BitTorrent protocol together. So basically in the future, if you downloading uh, torrents, downloading contents, share content with others, um, you can use blockchain to share contents. So basically, um, it's very promising because you can transfer values, can make payment, uh, can do the crowdfunding, uh, can uh, can um, make incentive for those people sitting in the torrent. Uh, mm -hmm. So all this, um, in the past, you can't achieve these things and uh, you can achieve right now. And this is also will be very huge in the Q4, is that we will make all the BitTorrent clients, including uTorrent, BitTorrent, like all the clients, to be one of the Tron wallets. So they will use the Tron network to um, to transfer their their tokens, their contents. So um, 
because you know right now Ethereum has like 30 million uh, um, address right now. I think after um, this um, project was launched and after our virtual machine and all these things launched, I think Tron can easier to uh, surpass the Ethereum on the um, scalability um, and on the user base um, in the Q4. So we expect if we will ha have 100 million users uh, in the 2019. And also, um, some people, community member, ask me, <laughs> when will the bear market end? end <laughs> and uh, uh, how uh, we can get like a bull market again. I think uh, uh, despite of all the like Bitcoin ETF stuff going on here, and I think that the Tron development and Atlas project is also a very promising part because once we uh, launch the, um, this Atlas pro project and bring the BitTorrent and the Tron protocol together, we, we will instantly get like hundreds of millions of the people uh, like mainstream uh, users, uh, they they get noticed uh, um, crypto and the blockchain and they get into this industry. Because right now, I think the, the whole blockchain industry is like a baby market. It's like just a few million people, mm -hmm. even like like j just a, a, a maybe a 10 million people knows the blockchain and a few million people have the uh, cryptocurrency and uh, hundreds thousand people tra trading the cryptocurrency, maybe. So, so once we um, uh, make the blockchain, Trump, Bitcoin exposure to the massive adoption, I think we we will got like uh, a bull market very soon. I agree that what we do need is mass adoption. And I think a lot of people are talking about this while well, speculation is great and the Bitcoin ETF, yeah, that's good. But really what we need are hundreds of millions of people around the world using Bitcoin and using different cryptocurrencies. And if I'm now able to, for example, seed my content, which was always something I think in the past that a lot of people, they weren't really incentivized to be a person who participates in the torrent network in terms of seeding it out. But if you now have something like Tron, which you can actually get rewards paid out in cryptocurrencies, then you have all these people who suddenly are earning cryptocurrencies. They're going to want to know, hey, wait a second. How do I spend this? What is this? Where, where can I spend it? And suddenly you have a lot of people interested in crypto, which is really, really yeah. interesting. Yeah, exactly. So um, basically, um, BitTorrent have like 1 billion people in store the, the, um, the, the, actually the, the uh, software. So I think it will be like a, a huge for lots of the people that haven't heard of the crypto at all. And they find out, oh, I got the crypto because I said something, right? So they, they will easier to get interested in the crypto area. And I think that's one of the turning points in the future. Very, very cool. Now, Justin, I want to turn the conversation a little bit to actually talking about some of your experience as an entrepreneur, because this is something I, I found really, really interesting. So. You are very close to uh, Jack Ma, who obviously is a very, very famous entrepreneur. Now, what are some of the key lessons that you have learned from him? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to share like one of the stories uh, when I first got admitted into the Hupai University, so the Jack Ma's University. Uh, when the Hupai University team first uh, uh, approached to me about the Hupai University, uh, the university haven't um, been built built yet. Actually, at that time, it's 2015. They don't have like campers, they don't have teachers, they don't have like anything at all when they approached to me. Um, but I um, um, I supported the idea and uh, um, submit all my applications and got uh, uh, um, uh, selected as uh, one of the um, the only millennial uh, students in this university. Uh, is because I, I support Jack Ma's idea. Um, because Jack Ma's idea is like uh, different from like at Harvard Business School. Mm -hmm. It's most of the time is teach you uh, to be like a, 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 a management team to, to, to teach you to be a manager because they think that the management can be teach by, can be taught by, by, by the professors. And the Jack Ma thinks the entrepreneurship um, 
can be um, need to be taught or uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur. So entrepreneur is like a different kind of the 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 um, uh, is like different role of in the society. So if somebody want to be cultivated to be an entrepreneur, he needs the entrepreneurship um, education. But the for example, all the business school they only taught on um, teach the um, the management. They don't like talk about entrepreneurship at all. So the Jack Ma want to uh, build the first uh, entrepreneurship school in the world. So basically, you can see all the teachers in the Hupai University is all from the it, um, previously they are all entrepreneurs. They 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 are not professors. So um so when um, Jack Ma give us lots of lessons, those lessons worth billions. Because he sometimes he spent lots of the money to get those lessons and he shared to us for free. So that's also I think is a very amazing part. Uh, Jack Ma, I think he can live like uh, for a hundred and two years. You know, Alibaba always have this story to be a hundred and two years because the Alibaba was founded in the nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So they want to uh, at least uh, uh, have like this 102 years to across three three centuries. So um, so he also believe himself will live like 102 years. So he divided himself into like two parts. The first part is to he 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 grow up and founded Alibaba and achieved listed in the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, spent his uh, 51 years to do that actually it's the same uh he uh alibaba was listed in 2015 uh so and after this after um he accomplished these things he wanted to be a teacher so he built up the hupai university and the rest of the 51 years most of the jack Ma's time will spend on students so he wants to be a teacher to share his entrepreneurship knowledge and the lessons to the future entrepreneurs. So basically, that's his idea. And uh, um, I was very, uh, I was moved by his commitment. Actually, uh, Jack Ma is a um, is a founder. Um, his company um, uh, worth like five hundred billion U.S. dollars, but he spent numerous time, like uh, every uh, every month. He give lecture, give class to the uh, students, and uh, um, and he because the uh, um, the course is like three or four days, but Jack Ma take a long time to uh, to prepare for the class. So I, I think it's a huge commitment, and uh, it, it make me also think in the future if I after maybe thirty years when I got um, a turn fifty. I will also start my own lessons to share my uh, thoughts on the crypto to maybe the future decentralized uh, uh, kids. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who would sign up for that course, but you've got a long way to go to make sure that you can see Tron get to three centuries. You got to live for a long time, Justin. So maybe maybe technology will help us get there without a doubt. Now, also, Justin, something I want to talk about is that you're known for your, you know, big personality and you're, you're quite the character to watch on Twitter and, and you're really out there in the public all the time. Is this strategic or is this just kind of the Justin experience? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's just myself. I think it's just myself. Uh, I can give you an example. Um, before, um, um, before our team grow very big, at that time, uh, the Twitter and the and all the social media it's just managed by 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 myself because we don't have the money to <laughs> hire like <laughs> bootstrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so basically, I want to share the news to the community uh, a lot. So I tweet a lot. So people sometimes will call me uh, the um, uh, the the an- announcement of announcement or the announcement Justin stuff like like this. So um, after we uh, right now we uh, we ha- ha- have a very solid uh, marketing team and the <laughs> social media team. I think these things is getting better. So actually, they have like a very solid and legit like a PR uh, 
um, um, passage and they got very uh, legit announcements. Uh, it's not like a Justin version of the announcement anymore. Um, but uh, before that, because I manage a lot of things myself, um, so um, the, um, the personality everybody will uh, see on the Twitter. Um, but I, I will insist on that. Uh, maybe sometimes I will share some of my personal thoughts on the crypto also on my Twitter. So, um, but, but sometimes my team is trying hard to control me from like... <laughs> Justin, stop tweeting, stop tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good though. I, I think people really appreciate that level of contact. We see Elon Musk, for example, he's on Twitter all the time, right? And it's, it's the new <laughs> means of communication with people. And it is important that you're the front man of the company to be out there and say, hey, this is me, this is what we're doing, and here's my communication about what we're doing at the company. I think people do appreciate that, actually. Yeah, exactly. now, I want to ask you one final question. Now, we've talked a lot about Tron and what's being built, but what would be the, the killer dap for you? What would be the one thing that is going to take Tron to the next level, in your opinion? Um, right now, we have huge uh, expectation on the Atlas project and the, the BitTorn, the decentralized content share network. I think this is uh, one of the um, um, things we count down right now. Uh, we expect it to release it in the Q4, and the community will see a better version of the uh, demo um, very soon. And also, um, the second thing I think is uh, Cure App on the Tron platform, I think is the game industry. Uh, we talk to uh, lots of the huge partners in the, the gaming industry right now. They are all like very prestigious institution. And uh, um, we're trying to develop lots of the fantastic games on the blockchain. Uh, for ex I can give you some example. Um, lots of the blockchain um, leaders, um, before they doing the um, blockchain stuff, lots of them trading the game um, items on the, the some kind of the mm -hmm. game platform. Uh, so basically, lots of the people dreaming of uh, sometimes we can got very exciting games we can play, and also we can freely trade globally of those items uh, uh, and the equipment on the internet. So I, I think um, this it will come true very soon. Um, before that, because the Ethereum has a scalability problem, so those companies, they can't like, build up on the Ethereum. But right now, we are talking with lots of the partners in the gaming industry. Uh, and right now, already, some developers develop right now. So we expect it to have lots of the game on the Tron platform. I, and I think people can trade, trade them in the future. Very, very cool. Justin, thank you so much for taking time to talk about you know, some of the key concerns that the community has and as well as share a bit of information about you know, Tron and what you're doing. So thank you so, so much. Thank you. Yeah. Go Tron. <laughs> <laughs>